going forward, extending Ansible usage. Okay, so we are going to be covering a few sections. The first part is going to be dedicated to covering modules and plugins. We're also going to go over the usage of the Ansible doc command, which is quite handy. After this, we're going to be covering using Ansible Galaxy and consuming and installing playbooks from Ansible Galaxy, as well as multi-role playbooks from different sources. And lastly, we're going to have a brief summary on just some of the things that you've learned and how to apply them. Okay, so Ansible modules and plugins. The main difference between modules and plugins, the, the way to think about this, is that modules provide functionality. Uh, modules are really just reusable standalone scripts that are used by the Ansible API. They are a vehicle that does something. They accomplish some task. There are many, many, many modules. There's way too many for us to cover. Uh, but we will be using the Ansible doc command to just show you how to basically search through them and get some of the basic commands and, and usages out of them. But there is a whole world of Ansible modules that are both provided by Ansible as well as third-party modules that uh, might be distributed by popular enterprise IT vendors or you can always write your own modules. Uh, but remember that modules provide functionality. Conversely, plugins provide features. Plugins are basically pieces of shared code that can be used or consumed by any module. So they're going to provide enhancements to the modules which provide functionality. And some of the examples of plugins might be ones that do certain lookups and pull in data from third-party sources or specific caching or other sort of ancillary uh, helper type features. Okay, so let's drill a little bit into modules. Uh, so we mentioned before that there are just hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of different Ansible modules and more added every day. Uh, there's a few places you can look to get a list of all the modules that are available on your system. Um, when you install Ansible, depending on the operating system or the, the way in which you install it, the location may differ, but in general, there's going to be basically an Ansible, and then underneath Ansible, there's going to be a plugins directory. And that's going to hold the hierarchy of all of the local plugins that are accessible. You can also look at the Ansible documentation. It's, it's pretty well up to date and, and pretty extensive. Uh, but we're going to jump into an easier way that I think, and that's using the Ansible doc command. So if you wanted to get an initial list of all of the modules that are available to use in Ansible, you can just run ansible-doc space dash L. Okay. And there's going to be a lot of stuff there. So we're, we're just starting in the A's. And, you know, we're several pages now. We're going through, look at all the Microsoft Azure type modules that are there. Um, there's a lot to go through there, so it's probably going to be easier to actually search. So that will bring us to our next command. Um, we're going to use the dash s parameter, or dash dash snippet, and it will give us basically the usage parameters and examples of a certain module. But I'm going to pass the grep command into the Ansible doc. And I'm just going to see what's available out there for, let's say, Amazon. Okay, so you might have Amazon Web Services in your place of business, or you might just be familiar with using it. No, nope, nothing came up for Amazon. I think it's going to be under AWS. There we go. So just kind of a quick look at this. Uh, there's quite a few AWS-specific modules here. So if we wanted to drill down to any specific one, we can pass the dash S command. But I'm going to use a, a more simpler Ansible module. I'm going to use the shell module because we've used that throughout the duration of this course. So I'm going to do Ansible doc dash s shell. And this is sort of like a built-in built man page. It's a built-in documentation system that will drill into every installed module in Ansible, including ones that you add. And it will tell you 
the subcommands, the, the, the syntax of how to use your various module within Ansible. Um, this is also called a snippet, so dash dash snippet would also work. So again, it's Ansible doc dash L will list all the modules. You can pipe that to grep and pattern match on a specific subset. And you can use dash S to get the info about usage and, and that sort of thing, also called dash dash snippet. Okay, on to plugins. Uh, like we mentioned before, plugins add, they add features here. So they, they are going to add ancillary sort of uh, features to um, complement your plugin set. Um, so there's a lot of different types of plugins. We're not going to go in depth of every type. Uh, but the most common ones are going to be lookup plugins or caching plugins. And as we can see here, there's uh, a few different file types uh, and technology types, data stores, things like that, that you can di that directly have uh, caching plugins available for them. Uh, common ones like a general memory cache plugin, uh, memcached, JSON, Redis, YAML, uh, MongoDB, things of that nature. And really, caching plugins are going to provide you with an ability to increase the performance of your Ansible playbook runs and really let you reuse data. So you don't have to do multiple lookups to, to pull in and yield sort of the same sort of data queries that you're working with. Some of the other more popular types of plugins, uh, there's the action plugin, there's callbacks, connection inventory, shell strategy and vars and there's probably a few who as well that i might not be covering here um, but just keep in mind plugins are there to basically make your life easier 